Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. All right. Don't worry, Jim is coming. Today we have a somewhat unusual session. Uh, we have Gabriel online uh, via Skype live and Lisa here. Thank you, Lisa, for coming. Thank you for having me. And it's the first time in Jim's channeling career that he just forgot about the thing. But he's coming, we called, and he had to reschedule another spiritual meeting. But he becomes a celebrity, you know, very beginning of the celebrity career but you know one thing that your schedule becomes packed and another spiritual teacher Barbara Carlton our Reiki teacher wanted to meet with him so he had to reschedule and he comes here in a few minutes so I have about 10 minutes to do my introduction and then Jim comes in full of guilt and just what's that word uh, disturbance because he forgot and he's sort of you know he had to you know, apologize and rush here so his channeling might be a bit uh, distorted with that but otherwise we hope that he will come and channel uh, that's first announcement second great thing happened uh, you might have noticed we have another invitation so the whole site started from invitation by Yael and Yael uh, Pleiadian Liran Arcturian Alliance called Gorkvitnir to come to visit the colonies. And now we have another invitation. And eight people, according to our channels, uh, eight people are being taken from the website to the colonies. None of them contacted me yet, but uh, I believe the whole, the whole information is true. A lot, there is a lot of evidence circumstantial evidence you know here and here confirmation that it's all it all kind of com comes to reality and manifests as true largely true um, another invitation came a few couple days ago through the queen Aurea of a planet with secret name we call it utopia 5 just a temporary name and they say it is in andromeda galaxy and I looked it up. There is a huge galaxy with, galaxy with trillions of stars. So the address Andromeda Galaxy is like huge. But you know where it's on the sky. And it's uh, populated with Pleiadians from Pleiades. Tall Pleiades. I, I suppose they're blue skin mostly. And some of them are green and some of them are white. Mostly blue and white. And Earth humans, surprise, Earth humans live elsewhere, and so our genetics is elsewhere. They are fully genetically us, uh, borrowed from the Earth, or enslaved from the Earth at the time of Roman Empire. And then they were liberated or liberated themselves, as usual it goes in both directions, and now they are free citizen of this wonderful planet, Utopia 5. So, I asked if they want uh, our visits and they cannot uh, accommodate any immigrants because of their policies, they are kind of overpopulated. And uh, they cannot accommodate our, us physically visiting just because it's not set up yet. It's, um, the technology makes it possible but not quite set up. So they will start working on technological aspect of that. and legal aspect of that. For them to accept visitors from Earth would be, they would require certain permissions from different galactic, intergalactic uh, regula regulatory bodies, how they call it. That's the second announcement. Third, the very interesting announcement is that I am broke now. Uh, I just have money to go for maybe another week and that's about it. So. So, I need to get my income one way or another. 
and yesterday I was desperate, depressed, and scared at the same time. I was depressed first, but Angel Gahil, who visited me in the past, said that it is depression, it is just simple fear. You just don't realize, but it is fear. So I was fearful. Is it a good word? Full of, full of fear. Now, overnight, it kind of transformed a little bit. So, there are multiple, you know, the, it, it can be a problem, but also it can be treated as a challenge. And if you treat it as a challenge, you start solving it one way or another. So, how do I solve this problem? Obviously, Jim is also in their financial situation, but surprise, his personal channelings are picking up, so he gets, I would say, maybe at least 50% of what he needs to stay afloat. He gets now from channel, personal channelings through you guys. So, that is great news. So. I don't, don't know how much Jim needs per month, but I assume it would be around 1200 a little more than 1000 just to pay his rent and his food and the gas. Um, so he probably gets maybe around $500 a month in channelings. So if he just get it a little more organized, uh, he might start Doing, and and his health seems to be okay. He doesn't. He's not very much burdened by channeling. He could do maybe. So someday he did three sessions. He could do possibly normally two three sessions a day. And if the worry about money goes away and he doesn't run for any other source of income, he won't get more free time. So, so personal channelings to dreams are invited. Uh, now we are a little more set up so you can. Uh, write directly to him on the website there is his email uh, you can communicate to him through skype you can directly we set up his paypal account you can directly uh, click on his uh, private sessions there is a button you can pay for the thing so i'm not it's it's not a burden on me anymore so this is a great a great uh, achievement although you know you, uh, he needs me to do that you know videos so so a new flow of uh, uh, requests for per private channelings would be coming. And for me to do these videos, I need, I need some sort of way to stay afloat. Uh, which, which is not that difficult to do the videos, but it takes, it's not more time, it's more like how much you think about that, how much you prepare for that, how much energy you put in that. And so far I have been putting like 90% of my energy was into that and I, now I need to do something more down the earth, more mainstream. Uh, Zachariah is our new channeler. He has first channel request to do that for money by one of our site members and uh, I don't know if he accepted it. He is a kid in school and with parents who worry about mainstream stuff. They're supporting that, they are supporting that, but not, no, I know. They also worry that he has to do well mainstream. And for a kid of six, 16 years old, it's a big thing whether you go mainstream path or you go alternative path. If you can, and he's a very talented channeler, he can channel easy, like uh, much easier than Jim. The energies come through him much easier, so he's very talented at that. For him, it's not a big load to be channeling. He can do it for no, with no effort. It's like a speaking on telephone or even easier. So, uh, if he can support himself by doing professional channeling, pr private sessions, then he doesn't have to go through this brainwashing through education. Hey, Jim, I just started my... Hey Jim, I just started my introduction. It's kind of going slow, but thank you for coming through. I'm uh, so sorry. <laughs> uh, go get your tea and relax. I will be talking for another 10 minutes. I'm so sorry. No problem. I, I don't know what happened. I totally, totally, completely forgot. I had so many things on my mind, but... It's, you know, it's a problem of being a celebrity. <laughs> You know, that's what happens on television all the time. They have everything, you know, everything set up and then 
a celebrity just forgets to come through and on what you do. You just put a commercial and another commercial, another commercial. That sort of thing. <laughs> Hoping that, you know, they get through traffic or something. All right, so I was talking about Zacharias. So, uh, br brainwashing. Uh, I say that education, I guess you have to understand the science of politics a little bit, but education is a brainwashing. You get, you get brainwashed, you get into mainstream science, and you get master's degree or whatever. Bachelor's, it's a little bit brainwashing. Master's, a bigger brainwashing. And then you get the PhD, is a full brainwashing. And uh, MD, doctor of medicine, it's a double brainwashing. When you talk to medical doctors, they're so brainwashed into mainstream, they can only think drugs and surgery. They, you know, for them to stir a step away and realize they are, they are healers and they can heal with energy, they can heal with light and sound. Uh, for them, it's really difficult. So that is uh, uh, for Zachariah, and, and I was scared in my school class many years ago, 1977, you know, ancient time. There was a kid who just stopped going to school, and he was a, a, a star, a star seed, I guess. He was a genius and very talented, and he realized it's brainwashing, he doesn't want to go through that. And uh, I was so scared for him, you know, me and my friends came to him and said, you know, you're losing your career, you're going against the system, the system will crush you. And only maybe 11 years later, when uh, the whole system collapsed, the Soviet Union collapsed, I realized he was right. He could easily go without degree if he's smart. Not being brainwashed is a great thing. And um, uh, there were a few other examples of that. So, so not going through mainstream career is a big decision, and I, I'm, I'm not pushing the career to that. But you know, I would support uh, him getting independent. Having you know, I, I'm very jealous. You know, doctors have their patients coming, and they are sort of free, after all this brainwashing, they are free from uh, serving the system. I will give you your throne and then continue my introduction. Um, so, um, having some sort of, uh, one of these uh, whistleblowers, what's his name? I forgot. He Sorry. is capable of speaking about uh, things because he has income, he works as video, video freelance video editor. Uh, even Lisa is a freelance. Uh, when you're freelance and you have your customers, you're free from the system. Nobody can fire you. Fire? Hire? Fire. Nobody can fire you. I, I wish to have that sort of uh, income. I mean, for Jim, he's close. Uh, you know, if he becomes a freelance uh, ch channel doing personal sessions and can support himself, that's, that's a solution. You're completely free. Uh, you are dependent on your customers, but your mind is there. You spend half of the, you know, of your awake time up there in a spirit world. That's, you know, that's very exciting. You know, being a Reiki healer would be great, but um, now we have so many in Rochester that uh, there is not enough patience to to do uh, that for a living. So coming back to my career, um, I have that company which ha which is a real one. It's registered LLC in New York State. Uh, it, we have uh, a board of advisors, we have executives, my partners, uh, who have their own means to support that and they believe that the company might someday uh, take over the world, basically. The market we are addressing is, is huge. It's, uh, you know, uh, conservative estimate it's $25 billion what is uh, spent now on, uh, on the drug which we are going to replace, which we are can possibly replace if we are successful. Uh, what, what is it? Uh, we are using extraterrestrial technologies, only the very beginning of those, only the mainstream ones, but we are inspired. I'm inspired in uh, uh, by extraterrestrial technology, light and sound healing and gene manipulation. And that's what I combine. That is, I have a patent submitted. It doesn't say extraterrestrials in the patent, but it says it has light and genetics. It's light-inducible gene therapy. Uh, there is, um, 
There are clinical trials on gene therapy done by others. There are clinical trials done on light therapy by, done by others. I combine the two. It makes perfect sense what, uh, what I'm proposing. I have done some experiments and we have some preliminary data that it works. Now we, we just, just add the money. And even first $20,000 will, uh, will push us for. I'm not asking for... I'm not asking for uh, for donations for that, but uh, I'm looking for investors. We uh, our videos are watched for by hundreds of people, and you have each one of you have uh, has uh, hundreds of acquaintances. So if you know investors who would be interested in that, we are giving. I am giving a big part of the ownership of the company to the first investors, so they will get percent of equity. It's. Uh, all set up, all is, we are ready to roll. There is a lab which would rent me a lab bench and they have all the equipment needed to continue the experiments. Uh, my previous experiments were funded by NIH and it was over $300,000 which is already, already have, is behind my belt. I, I was a principal investigator on that. So I'm inviting contacts. Obviously most of the people who are listening to me are not investors, but you might know investors. and. Uh, the whole project would, um, we might start licensing the technology to others in about three years after about three million investments. So it's uh, it's real stuff, but it takes some uh, luck to start it. So, so that's one thing. Second thing, uh, a job would, would be great, would be great. So um, I'm a molecular biologist, I can do molecular biology, I can do teaching, I can do travel, I'm also uh, educated as engineer, chemical engineer, I can do technical support, be a field engineer, I can travel and do either lectures, teach people the, uh, the, how to use the instruments or fix the instruments, that sort of thing. And uh, I, I'm a writer also, so I can write things, uh, tech, as, and also a technical writer. So if you know someone who can hire me, that would help greatly. And Jim also would, would benefit from a job. Uh, we, are listened, we have been listened by uh, hundreds of people, so we need help. You know, we are desperate. We need help. And any, how can you combine, you know, work, you know, starting a company, doing channeling, and uh, and looking for a job? You can actually. You, you you can combine the things. Any help in any of these directions would help moving all three of them. If I get a job, I would be able to do more channeling because I wouldn't, you know, would have means to support myself, and uh, I, I could uh, support my company. So it's all moving, it's all getting there, but you know, now we're in trouble. So please uh, think, you know, if you can connect us to interested people. I know, I know, we all have been already connected with one celebrity, one successful person, and. Maybe he could kind of connect. Uh, also, we you know a movie project would be another way, great way to bring the money and do something, something very positive in a positive direction. All the, all the, all these directions, all the directions make sense. Now, today, who we invite? We invite someone who can can help us financially. Uh, so what we we already asked this do I asked this do many times in private sessions. Please, please, please help us. We are desperate. Uh, and he helped us, but in indirect ways. But mostly, Yael have very big trouble helping us financially. Every time I ask, next day I get a telephone call, and I'm very hopeful that somebody will call and help me, give a job or give me investment or give me an order for certain work. And this is a uh, every time would be a government contract mediator company which wants to give me a government contract but I don't produce it, my company doesn't produce anything and when we start discussing we realize they have nothing to offer because they contact companies which produce something and give them government contracts. Uh, we, my company produces knowledge, we are doing a development of therapy, there is no government contract for development of therapies. Uh, yet, so so uh, that help by this do was uh, sort of missing every time. They are not very well qualified to help directly uh, in that. They kind of inspire maybe some of the contractors to call us, but uh, or contract recruiters call to call us, but uh, it just doesn't work. So we need someone else who would be able to 
help us find jobs in Rochester or elsewhere. I, I can move me and my family anywhere. We can do anything by, by internet. Uh, my, my wife is a molecular biologist, assistant professor. She feeds the family right now, but it's not enough. It is, uh, even in Rochester, it's not enough. So we would move anywhere for, you know, if we can get some income. Uh, find jobs or find investors. I believe there are investors who got their money from uh, selling other companies or investing elsewhere who want to invest in something with the future. And my technology, combination of light therapy and gene therapy, is uh, promising most of the application would be chronic immune disorders like uh, arthritis, uh, Crohn's disease, psoriasis, and also it would be very helpful with uh, neurological and brain disorders. So applications are tremendous and uh, we don't have to wait for FDA to approve that. We would develop the technology and license even to other countries. Europe is much open to this technology. Israel is one of the most open uh, countries to this kind of technology. So it's a, a real deal. So we invite extraterrestrials who could look from up there and find who can fund us and connect us. Because they are there, I know they are there, but you know they are blocked and we are blocked by lots of noise in the system, or advertisement and otherwise, and deception. So, uh, and uh, one of those who is qualified is uh, spiritual entity L, who is involved in uh, finances here. We invite him to speak to us. We spoke to him before and he responded to us, but that would be first time on camera. We are not asking for anything illegal or inappropriate or unethical. We want to be connected to people who need us. I want to be connected to people who want to hire me, who really need my expertise, or to uh, investors who can... Uh, so that's very unusual, but I mean, you can use channeling even for mainstream things. You can. Lakesh Pale helped us in the past by consulting in business matters, and his advice was great. And second who we invite would be uh, maybe hybrids who are already on the earth. There are Playel. I would invite Playel to speak. Maybe they can help. They are already playing in the field. They are very knowledgeable. I think some of the Pleiadians, some of the humans up there also are very knowledgeable and they can trace who to connect us with. Uh, uh, we just need a hint and we need a meeting, we will meet with them, we'll find LinkedIn is uh, one of the tools to connect to those people. So if you know who to connect, we'll get, a connect, we'll get introduced and so on. We have something to offer and, uh, and that would be great help. And here I will play a little music and then, Jim, do you want to say anything? You good? Sorry I'm late. <laughs> <clears throat> I was... I don't cannot really tell you what happened because I don't know. But there was many things going on this morning and I forgot all about that I had to be here and I have another meeting coming up at noon. Um, so very busy these days just running around getting my bills taken care of. Yes. <laughs> but because um, today was the final day to pay one so I had to go do that. So. I think that was first on my mind. That's all right. That is expected. Oh, uh, not for me. I don't forget things like this. You but you had relaxed life until you became a celebrity. I am not a celebrity. Uh, I mean, that's the first step. I mean, if you become channeling, channeler, or uh... but I do have a lot of friends who are, that I channel with now, and I appreciate your love and prayers. And there, everyone I talk to is really a wonderful wonderful people. I'm really enjoying them as individuals. They're all wonderful. Oh, by the way, Safira's computer died. Oh. Uh, hey, Safira, nice to Oh, you. you're back. And Gabriel, are you still there? I'm here. Hey, hi. <laughs> I want to see you. <laughs> I can't see you. Uh, we'll send you the link and you can see us in the recording. Gabriel, are you there? Hello. All right, we have Gabriel and Sefira participating. All right, Jim, uh, you have very little time. I know, I don't have Hurry much time. to channel. I don't know who's coming, but <laughs> hopefully somebody will. Um, oh, you cannot see? You're saying you could see. 
I, I, I thought you were putting it back on. We can't see. All right. No, we can't see. Very good. <laughs> You still can't see? I can. It's, it's loading. Oh. There's much going on with your weather, even at this time. The warble of the earth is causing great changes in the jet stream. As you have noticed, it's gone very far, far more south than it has gone in, in many years. Mm -hmm. Also, your counterpart, Europe, and the areas over there are having a very mild winter because you are taking the brunt of the cold spell. We are trying to fix the warble, but it may take even a year or two because of how quickly it's going and how slow we have to fix it to keep it within a safe balance. Makes sense. Therefore, we are working very hard on this problem, and I am here to just give you the information. Thank the you. axis of the Earth also is warbling, as you might be able to understand when the Earth is wobbling. The axis will also be different. Mm -hmm. However, it has not turned more it is just warbling with the orbit. Mm -hmm. This has been caused by several things. Uh, solar flares were one, but that is a very small part of it. There is energy from the galaxy that has since... Did you know that at one point within the last year, your planet was open to the center of the galaxy? Oh, yeah. We've heard about that. Yes. The energy that was drawn from the center of the galaxy to Earth and Earth to the center of the galaxy has caused a warble in the orbit. Mm -hmm. This is not uncommon, but not safe in all ways for mankind. However, we are keeping it as safe as we can. 
I thought you should be informed of this information. That energy from the center of the galaxy has is now arriving huh. because it takes light years to get here. But light years, not light years to get here, but it travels light years, I should say. But it has now arrived. It's come very quickly. Thank you for correction. Yes, I sometimes cannot state it correctly in your language because there are misunderstandings of how things work within Jim's mind and I use his vocabulary at times mm -hmm. and phraseology. That's okay. But the correctness is that it is arriving now and it's come from a long way. Okay. Let's put it that way. So this should continue to be a problem for as long as we can take to fix it. But it is very difficult to change the motion of an entire planet without causing much damage. So it is a very slow process. Mm -hmm. The warble must be done very slowly and with a very technical precision, mm -hmm. as you might guess. Other than that, we are dealing with the outcomes of the warble as well. So there are much times when we are not available at this time. Mm -hmm. There is much of things to do so we are doing them I, see. I have come today because there has been a slight reprieve in the need for myself in, in putting information right now they're doing more action than computation mm -hmm. the first stage has been computed and they are taking action and they have sent me here today to tell you what is happening. It's a pleasure to speak to you. The colonies also are well. The dimensions of Colony 1 are the most important, of course. With the telepathic children, mm -hmm. we're finding much innocence that is closer to what we can understand as basic human thought. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. And with this basic human thought, we are able to communicate even greater with the adults, bringing the level of our communication up to a higher standard, knowing the basis of how they think now, can bring a greater understanding of how the maturity of thought process in humanity occurs. Mm -hmm. So this way, we are now understanding humanity in a different way than we have in the many past years due to this development. And also, we can bring about telepathy much quicker in children because of our understanding of how maturity happens in human beings. This way now we understand the centers of telepathy and the chakra unifications that happen when telepathy comes about. Mm -hmm. We are very pleased to say that quickly there are three more children that are telepathic, bringing our count to eleven. This time in our history together, we are finding mutual bonds and emotions that we share and thoughts that we are able to bring together and unite ourselves in a, a bond that will not be finished even before the end of your evolution. I'm sorry, I probably did not state that correctly, but we will continue our bond with you and it is stronger now. Very good. 
And this means very much to us, as it does to the Arcturians as well. The Arcturians have taken even a greater stance to protect Earth and humanity than it ever has before, and it wants to make sure that first contact is very effective, and they will not move until that effectiveness level is reached because they do care about conflict of interests with the governments of your nations. We are now looking to make sure that life on your planet is preserved even greater in greater force because we can understand what actions might be taken by humanity during these times, knowing now how the development of humanity comes about and how thoughts are processed through the ages. We have children, adolescents, young adults, and mature adults, and even the elderly, in the process of learning how they have developed to where they are at this level, and it has been a very comprehensive time for us. I understand. It is very exciting for me to talk about. I am more excited about this than you can imagine, because we are now making real connections yes. with earthlings, whereas before we were making attempts at communication and attempts at real understanding, and now this is becoming reality for us. Very important in the process that we are developing. I know some may think out there that we are taking this information and using it in a negative way, but there are some that would, but we would not. We would not. I guarantee that for you. We only want to sustain your civilization. We only want to sustain those qualities that are high and in your culture and those things that bring us closer together. We want those things to be sustained and long-lasting. So, now, the other part of the equations in the colonies. Colony 3, where we have visual, video, holographic projections being made daily, is coming along very well also. There's much hope now that they would understand each other better and be able to make features for your people that would be acceptable by all. This is coming around slowly, but so did telepathy. But in a matter of months, we are able to develop what we have learned and transfer it to all the other colonies in some way, form, or another. Yes. So we are moving closer to a united thought, a united feeling of peacefulness and understanding within our two cultures, four cultures, ten cultures, how many ever there are to understand. Do you understand? I am here with much excitement today. Is there any questions about this you may want to ask? Um, any more, um, have, have the colonies accepted any more people from the website? Yes. But I cannot tell you how many, because I am not privy to that information as of yet. But I was informed that there are more interviews going on and more acceptances mm -hmm. happening because of this breakthrough. I have an invitation from a queen, Aurea, from uh, Utopia 5, Andromeda Galaxy. Aurea. Queen Aurea. Yeah. 
What, what does she say? She invited uh, people to volunteer for astral visits to their planet. Ah, this is acceptable. But I wonder if she realizes how many people would like to go. I think she thinks few, but there will be many. That is my only thought. Are they nice? They are acceptable, yes. They are not a dangerous race to you. Uh -huh. They are inquisitive, curious, uh -huh. scientific. How is it possible for them to be that far? So Pleiadians are in our galaxy and they are way far. In Andromeda. They do things differently than we do. They have thought projection abilities that we do not have. Uh -huh. They also take technology and integrate it with organic uh -huh. much more successfully than we have. So would you recommend for people on the other side to sign up for the astral visits and what do you think it's a good development? The best part of that development would be to have humans understand even a different kind of species and see their culture and understand that they are far different but far the same as well. Uh-huh. Does that make any sense. Yes, uh, they say they have many Earth humans yes. on their planet. From ancient times, they were taken as Romans and Assyrians and Greeks. Uh -huh. So, they have humans there. Yes. Why cannot you collaborate with them to learn more about humans? We may be able to, their communications with us have been better, have been rising, uh -huh. but we are not at the level of transference yet. You're striving very hard to raise 11 telepathic humans. They have millions of humans on their planet which are genetically us and they're all telepathic and advanced. I do not know that for sure. They are. Are you certain that they're all telepathic? Uh, certainly more than 11. Probably. Yes, they are in larger extent telepathic and they live in side by side with Pleiadians. I do not think Telepathy is exactly the same there as it is with us. I understand. Their telepathy is more and almost completely visible, visual, oh. visual, where our telepathy is also verbal and sometimes symbolic. In We see symbols and not total images. We are not as advanced as they are in their telepathic processes, so their understanding of telepathy is different than ours, and it comes from different ways. Their chakra system is much more involved than ours. They have 39 chakras that they can deal with energy transfer. Yes, they are higher dimensional than we are. Yes. Uh, but also they have great understanding of human politics, as uh, Aurea said. Aurea said. I do not know for sure, but I will check into that. I am so busy with what I am doing with the Earth, I do not check in with other cultures much. It, look, it sounds like contact between whoever plans the contact and Aurea's people would be really beneficial for the open contact. I will make that suggestion. 
Are you open to speak to Sephir and Gabriel? Briefly. Sephir and Gabriel, are you uh, interested in asking Briefly. questions? Briefly. Uh, I have a question. Uh-huh. Sophia. 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 A virtually came through the other day and said that there are negative attacks on the earth that even those who are helping us do not know about, which makes me wonder if you and your and the Galactic Federation working for a planet, is there something sneaking past you or was that not the truth? We are aware of the technology. The reptilian that spoke through Jim is not aware of the kind of technology it was so that is his explanation but not ours our explanation would be that we do know what kind of technology they are using but it is difficult to block it until they use it because it cannot be found until the waves are released when the waves are released, then we can block that. However, they released some waves during a very crucial time in our dealings with the weather and axis, and they were able to get through, and we were not able to stop it within the first 30 minutes. So it lasted for two hours. But we were able, two hours and five minutes, but we were able to stop it after that point. However, some were affected, many, many were affected, but it is stopped at this time. What were the effects? The effects are that you would be depressed or that you would have thoughts other than what you would normally have of a discontented nature, or perhaps it would cause you to forget things altogether, or remember things that you shouldn't remember. Uh -huh. These are the kinds of stimulus to the brain that they have. I see. I have, I have another personal question, may I ask you? Continue. Thank you very much. Am I, too, am I considered too old to go to the colonies? No. Okay, is there something blocking my ability to be telepathic or any health issues preventing me from going? I am not aware. I would have to check. Just a moment. Thank you. There is a question about cigarette smoking and lung capacities and also which leads to heart conditions. These things would be a hindrance until further investigation to find that they have not affected the body in other ways. Can they be healed? Yes. Okay. All right. Gabriel, are you there? Thank you. Yes. Gabriel is not here. Um, so if you yeah. have more questions. Oh, Gabriel, are you there? Yeah. Uh, right. I'm wondering about um, the polar shifting. Will there be any polar shifting in yeah. the future? Yes. In the future? We have mentioned before that the shift of the polar axis is 3 degrees. 3.172 degrees exactly. But we are keeping it in place. Even with the warble that we're now finding the Earth involved with, we have stopped the axis from turning. Every few several hundred thousand years, 
the earth turns and the axis reverses, but we are stopping that at this time. We would like to preserve the societies of humans that we are now in contact with, and it is a consensus within Grukvignir and other civilizations that you can be a benefit to the universe and galaxy if your race continues. Thank you for that. <clears throat> Any more questions? Thank you for the information about the weather. It's a very warm winter here in Sweden. Yes. You are getting warm weather. This area where we watch is getting hostile cold weather, lower degrees. It's been below zero more times this winter than it has in many, many years. And this is due to the warble of the axis changing the jet stream into a very irregular pattern. Uh, they really had the question about the yell and your personal experiences. Uh, no, I don't have a question. Okay. Mr. Yes. Um, I'm not sure if you're aware of my hybrid daughter. Um, apparently, was an accident, and she died in her hybrid body. Do you? Can you give me more information about that? Because I have some information from Lakesh, but I'm still feeling like I need to know more information. I am sorry I cannot give you information at this time, but I will be able to speak of that further at a later time. Okay, thank you. I also have an idea that I'm not sure if you're familiar on Earth sometimes when we have big meetings or workshops, seminars, we have like spiritual parents who take care of the group. Ah. Uh spiritual level. Yes, I have heard of your idea. I have heard your idea, yes. I know your idea, you yes. <laughs> yes, I know your idea. Is it? It is being considered. Is it, it is acceptable okay. to some and not to others, but it is being spoken about during actually the same committee that does interviews are also discussing this form of teaching and transferal of humanity. Okay, thank you. And I would like to ask you, do I still have too much blockage around me to be interviewed? Am I still too afraid? Is there something blocking that? I would have to check with the council. Mm. Thank you, Takara. I must go at this time. Thank you for letting me speak. I am very happy to give you what I feel is very great news for your civilization. Thank you, Hey. <laughs> great job, Jim. Awesome. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Was it good? <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's really good. Really, really good. Excellent. The message was awesome. Cool. Good. Thank you. I'll watch it. <laughs> <laughs> Talk between each other. I will see if Jim can get his uh, lunch to go. And, uh, <laughs> You meet with Barbara at noon, right? Yes, she pushed it back till noon, but she really wants to talk to me, so... I'm sorry that I was late, everybody. I really... that... you know what? I totally forgot. Even Safira wrote me, see you online, and I, it didn't click. It didn't click.
So. We're just happy you're here. You arrived at the perfect moment. And um, I was going, oh, do I have a session with Sophia today? And <laughs> I better check my book. <laughs> I said, I'm losing my mind a little bit. So, but anyway, um, yeah, because she even reminded me. She said, I'll see you online. And I reminded you. I know, that's okay. It just went right out of my head. What? I should have said, I'll see you at the webinar. That would have been better. Yeah, and then I would have went, oh my God. I guess that's okay. I mean, it's all my fault. Maybe it was supposed to be like that. I don't know, but it certainly was not my usual. I'm usually very on time, so. Whatever. But anyway, thank you for understanding. I appreciate that. Next time I will remind you a few times. Uh, well, I'm getting my appointment book. I, I've i stopped two different places to get an appointment book and couldn't find one I like. So I'm going to get one today. I have to have one because if I don't write everything down, it will be out, gone. So, <laughs> so. Well, I'm in this state for the last few years. You know, this, yes. So. Especially with the children driving them around for their swimming well, and other things. It's important. Well, I had a friend in from Buffalo last night. He left this morning at 8. I went to breakfast with my friend Tim. I went to pay my bill. And then you called on the way back to my car. And I was like, why? I freaked out. So, <laughs> so I invited somebody to help us with, uh, with finances. And uh, it didn't happen. Oh. What's how much per month do you need to stay afloat? Me? $2,000. 2000 is That's too much. <laughs> how much do you get from, from China? Not 2000 <laughs> Per month. Per month. Oh, uh, it just started picking up. Before this, before February, it was hardly anything. But now in February, it, it's been like um, an average out of a little over 150 200 a week. 150 a week makes 600. Yep. 700 per month. Mm -hmm. So we just. Uh, I I'm, I think we lost a lot of personal uh, requests because of these mismatches with like cash. He kind of gives someone certain percent of DNA, then he changed his mind and forgot about it and gave another percent of DNA, and then uh, he didn't recognize the person who was a female. And uh, I think people kind of, few of people were very disappointed about that. Yeah, I'm sure. I hope like she'll come out and will kind of see. Some of his explanations were right to the point. So he did lots of miracles, and then few mishaps happen. Mm -hmm. So he might need I to calibrate his, uh, you know, his vision. He's way far from here, and somehow his well, channel becomes. I'm wondering Strong. if you something like he was affected by something, or I'm not sure. Yeah, that sort of thing. I think maybe uh, there is a law, universal law, that if you channel to Earth, you have to mix up 25% of this information or mistakes in your channeling, otherwise you will be uh, blocked. <laughs> That's my understanding. And somehow, you know, different sources have different percent. I think Takeo, when she speaks, she is very careful. By the way, wobble, you say wobble, not warble. Okay. Huh. Because well, she there is... there is a warble, too. Warble? Are you sure? Is warble a word, everybody? I've heard it before. Warble. I've heard of warble. I think it's just mis... It's mis wobble. Misspelling of... You know, wobble and warble, I'm not sure. When you, when you read scientific... What, did Tinker in, say warble? Yeah, in scientific text they write right. wobble, and warble might be just uh, you know, a slang... A sign Miss, of it, yeah. yeah people who never read, yeah, warble. warble. I don't know. Huh? I've probably said warble and wobble both. Yeah, she now is aware. Okay. I mean, that's not a big deal. Um, but when she said, uh, yeah, when she used light, light years for time measurement, then uh, she had to correct herself because light years is a distance measurement. Yes. And the distance from us to center of, from the center of the galaxy to us would be like billions of years. Yes. What is she corrected right. it? Yes, yeah, so I don't know exactly, but it's sort of a very large number. Yeah, but what about the middle of the galaxy? From the middle to the galaxy, light goes to us very, very long time. I don't know what it is, but yeah. it's a very long time. 
So whatever happened, you know, it has had to, if it goes to the speed of light, it had to start there a long time ago to reach us now. Right. Unless it goes faster. So I Good want to, to go back to the idea of, uh, of uh, you know, I need money somehow. <laughs> and uh, I need help, guys. I need help. And girls, I need I, help. I, Jim needs help. I mean, if he gets his channelings just a little bit up, personal, he would be just fine. Because last week was very good. Yeah. Uh, but the weeks, you know, it started in February to get a little better every week, and last week was very good. Uh, but this week doesn't. What, what I need so to far, know from it doesn't you, look that good. What I need to know from you, people, what people get from personal channeling? Because every channel would be different. They get verifications, I think. But no. Verifications. Uh, you know, until now it was Lakesh coming and saying, you have certain percent of DNA, you have that number of children, uh, you are Pleiadian or Reptilian or Grey, and for people it's eye-opening. For me it was eye-opening. I didn't believe from the beginning, but when I get it from here and there, I don't know, it's kind of a common place for me. But for them it is, mm -hmm. it is a big deal. So that's what you get from your channel. Um, well, a lot of people that I channel with want to know a lot of personal things about things that are happening with themselves, from what I understand from Lakesh and Takur and Tim Penn, Penn Tin, or whatever his name is, Tim Penn. Um, oh. They want to know why this is, is happening and that's who's happening. Tim Penn? The Penn. He's, no, Tim Penn. A new person, I never spoke to him. He's a Yigil. Oh, yes, right. I never spoke to him. All right. No. But he has spoken to somebody. So what I ask in my channel in session, personal, uh, obviously about my children. Yeah. So, like, but a lot of people are, have outside forces coming to them. So. Ah. So who? Yeah. Who has visited me then, and he looks it up and tells you. Yeah. Right, and it usually, you know, they always verify that that exactly that's exactly what happened usually. Uh, when I get done talking to them, they're they're saying, telling me that, oh, this is what he told me, and that's what he told me, and yeah, I'm very proactive. So when I yeah. speak to people, I start pushing my agenda, no matter what, and it hurts the relationships. Uh, so when I sp have a meeting coming and I ask Lakesh, so I'm meeting that guy. What should I say? And usually his answer is very typical, but you know it varies from guy to guy. Or to a girl, or to a woman, and um, like for one, it was. You have to first listen to him. Uh, let him tell his story, and when you listen to him enough, he might open his mind to listen to you. That was his advice. It was perfect. So I connected, <laughs> and I was receptive, and it was important. In another meeting, I said, you know, what should I offer him? Don't offer him anything. Let him offer what he can contribute. And mm -hmm. it was another good advice. And for another thing, was a guy who wanted me to you know, do some work on him. A friend of family work on his patent and promote it in the United States. And the answer of Lakesh was, is he paying you? And I said, no. So don't spend much time than you can afford. And it was another great advice. So, <laughs> so Lakesh's advices were... were uh, Oh, very, very useful in uh, relationships, mm. and in some other relationships also, and uh, mm -hmm. and with uh, family relationships, and with uh, some of the friends, uh, with someone who is very sick, and another one who is very sick. Um, sometimes they come and help. You know, you know. Yeah, I, uh, I get a lot of help, help with help from them. Uh, Take was great in advising me on diet and help. Take was incredible. Uh, sh they, they, they we didn't understand. need to read anything today. <laughs> no, no, we, because, you know, Lakesh is not coming now. You, you have to leave. I have to go, yes. You have to go. But, um, uh, Max, yeah, Yes? I'd like to send you all love, blessings, and abundance. Thank you. Thank you for today with me and with all of us. Uh -huh. and I See you soon. Thank, Thank you, Sephira. Thank, Thank you, Sephira. Thank you, Sephira. Uh, bye bye, uh, Gabriel. Sephira, you won't be able to see because you are using an instrument.
possibly a tablet with an outdated version of Skype or the version of Skype which doesn't allow group calls. So only the computers with the uh, latest version of, Skype, version of Skype allow you to see in a group call. So uh, make sure you're on the computer next time. Okay, right. thank you. Thank you. Okay, God bless. Bye-bye. 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 Thank you. I can't believe I got it. the information that in the future I might start talking with the tree spirits in the forest. Oh, wonderful. Uh -huh, I think... I work with that. Oh, good. Uh -huh, I but, think... the, but the consciousness of humanity is not ready yet for that. But trees are wonderful. Trees are uh -huh. wonderful spirits. All right, Gabriel is saying that uh, he, he, he is about to talk to tree spirits. That was my interest for a long time. I'm very aligned with the trees, although I have allergies to them. So I, my relationship is uh, double. You know, I, I, I killed a lot of trees in my life, you know, doing camping and stuff and uh, building stuff. But also I work mostly, no, not young trees. I mostly work with the dead trees, but still I, I did some, you know, intrusions in the forest. But uh, my understanding is that individual trees don't speak speak not often it's mostly you speak to the spirit of the whole four they have kind of united soul but yes i do reiki on the trees i come hug them i do reiki i when i go i spend time to put my hand on the tree and and just meditate uniting with the trees for all those that have people that are hyperactive um lakesh said to go hug a tree and until you can feel its pulse mm -hmm. When, it, when you start feeling its pulse, it slows you down and makes you not so hyper. If you can last long enough to start feeling the pulse of the tree, it will calm your system down. Uh -huh. oh. uh, but, but I didn't mean the trees that I'm talking to. I'm talking with... There is spirits and beings that are invisible to us that live in the forest. Oh yes, uh -huh. definitely. Uh -huh. and Fairies and wood will, will take stuff from some people just to play with the people. And then people go around the house trying to find the thing and then some, in the end they can find it. That's, yes. I, we talked to a fairy once and they are one of those spirits that are in the trees and near the trees and in the forests. The fairies, the wood nymphs, um, all kinds of, there's gnomes and things, so yeah, there's all kinds of spirits in the woods and they're very, they're wonderful, they really are, high energy creatures. So. When, I was, when I was a kid, uh, I was told that I was channeling my Yael counterpart. So the three spirits beings were talking to me, and I was channeling his response through me to them. Oh. So that's why they were excited about me. But then I forgot about that. <laughs> but they will remember that. Yeah. They haven't. They never forget. You'll definitely be helpful in some way in your with your uh, with your power. Yes. Yeah. So that would be wonderful. I encourage you to seek that, yeah. But people will think weird if I take money on I know. Help if people could connect. <laughs> Even my best friend doesn't believe that I, I can channel, so... But he's still my best friend because he loves me and knows me for who I am. But he, when I talk about channeling, he goes, okay, you know, he sort of doesn't want to talk about it. But um, the thing is about it, is he does believe it, but he doesn't want to talk about it. So, <laughs> I think he does believe it. And I know that my best friend from Syracuse believes it, so, because I've always been a very psychic with him, so, but I never channeled until July of last year. Oh, wow. So, you started in May. Huh? You started in May. Not channeling. Channeling in May. Oh, really? Yeah, I have recorded. Has it been that long? <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> ten, ten months. Oh my gosh. Oh, I'm sorry. I made a mistake. Seasoned channeler. I'm a, not a seasoned channeler. We <laughs> have another few minutes. Talk to me about jobs and, um, and uh, funding for the company. How do I find a job or investor? Me? Yeah, talk to me. How do, I, how do you find a job or an investor? Yes. 
I don't know. Uh, I guess I would uh, look at the companies that you would be interested in uh, that that you think could help you and then get in contact with them. But you know what? I would find out. I wouldn't go to the president first. I would go to somebody in the company and find out what they thought. Somebody like uh, an employee and bounce their your ideas off of them and see what it, see what they think because they are the uh, they're more like the heart of the company he's just the brain uh-huh you want to talk to the heart first uh-huh <laughs> does that make sense uh, yeah i don't know they'll tell you where the brain's at <laughs> yeah all those companies are outside of rochester how they get there Oh, I don't know, but that's, I mean, if it was in Rochester, that's what I would do, All so. Right. See, I would talk to somebody in the company, uh, or I'd go to the company and uh, put in an application and talk to the person that's taking the applications. Physically. Yeah, but you know what, lately, it's all online, mm -hmm. so. They don't see the person anymore. They don't see the person they anymore. They do interviews eventually. They do interviews, but only if they see you on paper what they are exactly looking for. Uh -huh. So, I know I used to do interviews, so it's very hard. But I took applications. Personally, I didn't do it online. So, I mean, I took some online, but I didn't. 90% of them were in person. So, I got to see the person, see how they were dressed, if they had tattoos on their face, if, you know, if if what was on there matched the person. So tattoos were for, you know, good or bad? For me it doesn't matter, but the company forbids them. Oh, so forbids them. So if, if they're visible, I have to go with the company rules. So. I understand. But for me it doesn't matter. I wouldn't care. I, if As long as I could do the job, it doesn't matter if they have tattoos or their hair in a bun or whatever. It doesn't matter. But some companies, for presentation's sake, do care about uh -huh, things like uh -huh. that and how they're dressed. You know, if they're if they come to an interview and their shirts ripped and their pants are ripped, you have a feeling that they're really not there to be interviewed seriously. Mm -hmm. You feel like they're just there because it's I have to put it in an application. They're on unemployment or whatever, so it does make a difference how your first impression is. However, I don't always just look at first impressions. If I want a second interview, I usually what I have found is there's something interesting in their makeup, in how they present themselves or what they say to you that makes a difference. So, and their excitement level and their their joy level and their if they're going to if they have no joy at all they're going to bring everybody down. They're going to walk in the room and everybody's going to go, oh no, it's him again. You know what I mean? But if they come in and they're pleasant and happy, that makes a difference. Yeah, but you know, I'm so, uh, so different, unfortunately. I, unfortunately, yours. I, I'm so, <laughs> so, so different that it's really hard to fit in mainstream labs or in mainstream groups of people. Especially when they start talking about stuff. It's so depressing and uninteresting. And I radiate the depression and, and, and the discontent. So finding a group which is enlightened would be great. Mm -hmm. you know, other Pleiadians, other star seeds who are thinking alike. And most of them are, as I am, are unemployed. But maybe there are some groups which are doing good stuff, how do you find them? You got me. Right. Know. Yeah. Jim and I would make a good team doing anything. Yeah. We get along very well. We interact well together. Yeah. Yeah. We, you know, one, one project we could do is, uh, is travel and give, uh, give public sessions. Other projects and we actually I can I can do a uh, Reiki training some uh, that is you not can combine that not taught in the books some alien Reiki training that from Takur yeah Takur did some very interesting Reiki training with me so we should but I don't see money coming I mean 
they can barely pay for the ticket. You know, where do we get? You, you need two thousand a month. I need two thousand a month. Where do we get this four thousand? <laughs> the traveling with with the sessions wouldn't support my family. No, it's unfortunately it's uh, it's more like uh, it's better to paying for for the ticket. Now, uh, what else can we do? Uh, the the movie project would be more interesting. Uh, I gotta go. <laughs> yes, yeah, you're right. I gotta go though. But the hey, thank you, from... Jim. Uh, we'll continue the discussion. Uh, Oksana has a lunch to go packed for you. Oh. <laughs> So a you, lunch to go. <laughs> do, you know, do you know where to drive? Do you have a GPS? Yes, it's oh, in perfect. my phone. Yeah, it's a. Uh, I have to. I'll punch in her address and that will take me to her. Yeah, 25 minute drive, but you know. Uh, oh, watch for stop signs. Team. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She is always 40 minutes late, so you're good. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, so. Uh, Thank you for watching. If you don't want to listen about my, my project, then you can hang up now. But uh, I wanted to talk about the technology which I have. Uh, and also about uh, a rabbi. I went to uh, my rabbi friend, a Jewish priest, and asked him specifically how do you raise money for... Uh, how would I raise money for my company? Because that's what he's doing. He is raising money for his... Thank you center and yes for his center and uh, uh, he, he raised over two million dollars for his center recently a couple last couple years little less than a couple years so he is kind of professional and he's way younger than me and he's very successful in what he's doing so what he said was it's good to see you nice to see you, nice to see you. love you both love you Good night. Bye-bye. Have a great day. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. So what he said was that uh, about 50% of his time he is raising money for his uh, center, Jewish center. And... Um, uh, it was great help, and really, if you if you are raising money, you have to do it almost like almost full time. Yeah, fifty percent is a lot. And uh, uh, the main secret is you never uh, come to anyone without introductions. So you have to, you need the introduction to a person. You need to find the right person who would really be interested in what what you're asking for. Basically, to help in this case was uh, Jewish life. To help Jewish life and stuff, uh, to promote Jewish values, um, which are also very good. Uh, it's it's a honorable purpose, and uh, so you find through LinkedIn or through friends and through other ways to find a way to be introduced, even if it is fifth fifth level, how the fifth step introduction. Someone introduced to someone else, to someone else, to someone else. You need to be introduced. And then he says that the job is done. When you get to the right person, uh, you get there, you, you end up with uh, with a donation. In my case, it would be more likely would be investment, but but, but uh, it's the, the key is to get to the right person. And it's mostly you have to travel. He travels outside of the town most of the time, and he travels anywhere and uh, comes and does his speech and uh, shows what they already achieved. And the advantage of his position is that um, he's kind of in the franchise. They did it for for thousands of years, and even in the, his area of activity, he didn't start from scratch. They already kind of had a beginning, and he just develops whatever was built before him, so he can show real results, and people uh, are impressed by by what he can achieve with, with that little funding. And he achieves a lot, basically. That's a very vibrant, very happy community that he built. He is building and uh, the community is flourishing. Uh, there were many other advices, but that was, I guess, very, very useful. So in my technology, um, again, it's it's built on, on big, big past of experiments of others and, uh, and, and of myself. Uh, so gene therapy is uh, something which is a future medicine. Uh, 
you know about genetically modified plants and mo most of the agricultural plants in the United States are already genetically modified. They are genetically modified by evil guys with evil purposes. Basically they put their genes resistance of, uh, to herbicides and then they kill everything else with herbicides but this uh, modified plant survive. And not only they do that, they also kind of push away traditional plants. So the farmers that don't use uh, genetically modified seeds, their plants will be also be, will be affected. So they spray things from airplane, airplanes and stuff of that sort. So basically at some point uh, they uh, push away normal, uh, normal life and create uh, genetically modified substitution for that. So that is already uh, a big practice. Monsanto is a big name of that. You can research that. That's a big topic. I'm not very interested in that. But for humans, it is uh, something that can save lives, make us healthier. Basically, you don't genetically modify a human to transfer this trend to the future generations. You genetically modify not the... Uh, uh, sexual cells, not the germline, but you modify the peripheral cells, you modify the other cells in the body which will not produce the offspring. So, so it's uh, more localized, that's, uh, that's, uh, uh, is not spreading through the population, it is only for this specific individual, you can add genes which allow you to, uh, to be more healthy or to fix the problem. Uh, although genetic modification of humans is going full force first by aliens, we have now Pleiadians through many generations. It's mostly historical for the last several centuries. Um, certain percent of Pleiadian day, we have uh, DNA, we have uh, Yael, which is gray, we have Zeta grays, and now we know we have uh, reptilian DNA monars and many other kinds which we will discover later. But uh, we are a big mix. Ob obviously, historically, we are combined from Syrian DNA, uh, Anunnaki, Elohim, uh, uh, Pleiadian, some sort of a gray, um, what am I missing, Liron. I'm not sure, no, not sure, I don't think we have Arcturian, but we have a few others. These are major, but we are kind of mix of many, many others. But Pleiadian is one, Pleiadian, Syrian, uh, Grey are one of, uh, and obviously we have earthly ancestors, so in addition to all this alien, we have earthly, earthly DNA from, uh, which make us relatives to apes and uh, primates and even mice. So we all have similar DNA to all our mammals, and even to we go farther. We we are we belong to Earth in large of our genome, large part of our genome. So also humans, uh, secret government and uh, and companies uh, already do genetic manipulations. Uh, they modify DNA, so that it's it's not officially approved, but uh, there are clones. Uh, there are. Uh, genetically improved offspring, so that is already a reality. And when you start researching that, it's a, it's a huge part of what is happening. It's not that difficult now. It's not that difficult. It is already part of the of the reality. We, you know, hybrids, not only alien-made hybrids, even human-made hybrids are working among us. So by technology, no, gen, gen therapy technology. So gene therapy is in clinical trials. There are over 200 clinical trials uh, funded by United, uh, uh, approved by uh, by United States, and uh, even in Rochester there are six clinical trials. So we can uh, go and volunteer to receive some sort of gene therapy injection and uh, participate in a clinical trial. Most of them are for cancer. In China, uh, clinical uh, gene, gene therapy has been approved for commercial use since 2004. So it's already four, uh, 10 years as uh, tens of thousands of patients underwent commercial gene therapy for cancer, against cancer. 
Um, it's moderately efficient, but it, it uh, certainly doesn't produce any weird effects. It's pretty uh, trivial. We are genetically modified by viruses. Viruses come and go. There is uh, a lot of uh, viruses that make us sick. Uh, flu, common flu is a typical virus which is traveling between humans and carrying genetic information back and forth. Some of that genetic information is bad for, for you and some of that is actually good for you. Uh, the whole genome of humanity is evolving and new genes, if they are beneficial for humans, they are transferred between humans using uh, just by viruses, very naturally. Obviously, bad guys can uh, distribute b bad genes among, the, among the humanity as well. And especially they would be interested in genes which would allow mind control and certain weapons. So if you, they distribute a, a, a gene which would allow them to turn off the enemy soldiers, uh, th that would be for them uh, a typical project that would do. I don't know if it's uh, how far does it go, but that's what uh, very typical for modern genetic uh, thinking what, what could be done for uh, mass control of enemies or even your own population. Here, uh, so gene therapy uh, right now uses very, uh, and also there are uh, nice viruses which live in our bodies, like AV virus, adeno-associated virus, not adenovirus, but adeno-associated virus, which is, everybody has it, you have it, I have it, everyone, and it's never uh, brings anything bad, it's just part of our system. We have, we have bacteria living on our skin, which is healthy for you, for normal function. We have tons of bacteria, several kilograms of bacteria living normally in our gut, and uh, even in each cell, there is certain organelle, which is called mitochondria, which is also foreign to our uh, cells initially. So, it's, you know, it's all mammals have it, all uh, uh, eukaryotes have it, but, but it is something foreign. It's not, uh, it has its own genome. It's kind of a parasite, a parasite which became an integral part of our cells. So, viruses in this way are also very normal to have for us. Uh, so there is a lot of nice viruses that sit, uh, sit and do their stuff in us. Uh, I can talk much more about that. Transposons is a part of that sort of uh, integral part of our cell, which also jumps and multiplies. Uh, so our genome is fluid, and we know the main sequence of the genome is about three gigabases, about three gigabytes size of the sequence in each cell of us. And it's also fluid, it is, we exchange, and it, is, it changes with time, and uh, it is modified by our life experience. Not in primary sequence, but the modifications of the DNA are modified. So gene therapy uses the viruses which are replication deficient, they don't multiply in you. They multiply them outside using artificial system, and then you inject in a person, and this virus uh, is there and it produces certain drugs, certain natural drug inside the body. So it's a great development for medi development for medicine because it's a natural thing which comes to the cells. It's natural DNA which is there, and it's natural drug, the protein which is produced. So it can be very healthy, much healthier than modern uh, modern drugs which are uh, chemicals which poison the body. So uh, any chemical taken in amounts which are taken as drugs are is toxic for the internal organs. Uh, so gene therapy is a fact of life, and it has been approved in China, Russia, Ukraine, and Europe right now. In the United States, they don't approve it for multiple reasons, and one of them is that it's once it's in the body, it's not not possible to stop whatever it is doing, and. Many gene therapy drugs are there for uh, for months and years. Uh, so if you inject some DNA, if it's good for you, it's great. But if there is a side effect, uh, you're screwed. You don't have a way to stop. Uh, light therapy is also well uh, well established. Uh, you, when you travel on a plane, you can see in your booklets, uh, in the advertisements journals, you can see many advertisements for uh, light therapy for hair loss, which is working, uh, light therapy for obesity, which is working pretty well, 
Uh, typically, it's red light and near infrared light, and light therapy for um, uh, smoking cessation. It also works pretty well. Uh, and uh, the science behind it is pretty good. It's um, coincidentally it started in large extent in Hungary and Russia, and much of the mechanical uh, bio mechanism uh, mechanistic work, the me molecular mechanism for uh, for the light therapy has been studied in Russia in Estonia. Actually, part of the Soviet Union was Estonian uh, center which uh, did a great work on that. So we know all the molecular mechanisms. So now my company, we develop sequences which are activated by light and we insert them in gene therapy drugs. And now the drugs allow to, um, allow to be controlled from outside using a healthy uh, LED array which you can wrap around your uh, sick organ, uh, a joint or put on your belly or on, on the spine and, and activate the drug only temporarily using uh, near infrared light. So now science fiction becomes much more real. So you can uh, not only put the drug there and modify the genes, but you can also uh, control it with near infrared light. So that is very realistic. We did, we done uh, tons of experiments, and we need to do more. And we are raising money. We are inviting investors to invest in us. And for the first uh, few tens of thousands, you will get certain percent, the investors will get certain percent of uh, the ownership of the equity of the of the, of the the company. So, so it's all very realistic and uh, it's going to happen if not me, somebody else will do that, but hopefully it will be my company that will lead, lead that. And uh, we submitted the patent and now I'm writing uh, an extension on that patent, so it's all very real. So uh, connect me to investors, uh, you know, uh, hundreds of people listen to us and uh, yeah, each of them has hundreds of contacts, so hundred by hundreds. So we are listened by. Uh, we we can reach thousands of people. Hopefully, among them there are investors who would be interested in that kind of technology. Obviously, it will revolutionize the medicine. It will eventually. Uh, the drugs will be replaced by gene manipulations and laser manipulations and sound manipulations. The field, which is um, it's it's now mainstream. It's called optogenetics. And uh, where you combine optics and genetics, there is another field which is called optoacoustics, where you combine the sound and light and modify things. And again, it's it's uh, pioneered by the military optoacoustics, but it can be applied for health in a very positive way. So optoacoustic genetics, that's what we do. Optoacoustics plus optogenetics, that's what we do. And I need your help to connect me to investors. Obviously, any other help like helping me find a job, even a remote job would be great, or a travel job, or I can be representative of a company and sell in northern United States, upstate New York, I can uh, sell the goods of other company, be a representative, or be a tech support specialist, or uh, uh, do webinars and teach stuff, or do uh, in-person seminars, so there is a lot of opportunities here. Connect me to the right guys, and uh, I'm now actively looking, so I need your help, and I will help you. And we send you our love. Do you have anything to say? Oh, I'm just still listening today. All right. Uh, Gabriel, we are closing. Do you have anything to say? I hope it worked out for you. Thank you very much. And Gabriel is in, uh, you said Sweden, right? Yes. And he's also looking for a job. What's your profession? Uh, IT support. IT support. So Gabriel is IT support specialist, a star seed connected to EEL. If you know who might need uh, an IT support specialist, do you want to reveal your town? Gabriel, do you want to reveal your town? It's up to you. I don't know if I want to That's fine. travel with someone else. That's fine. So. Um, so Gabriel is also looking for a job. And Jim is also actually looking for a job. But hopefully he can make his money by just see, you know, having a nice time and enjoying channeling. I think that would be best. If I could channel, I would do just that. I would sit here and channel for you. <laughs> All right. Uh, maybe that. And, uh, and uh, uh, last time, last time when uh, Lisa was here, she felt like somebody wanted to come through her. So she might start channeling. And Zakaria is also channeling. He is 
Great. So, so we invite also more channelers and uh, we'll be like a channeling hub. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, that's reality. We have, a, it's like communication station, right? All right. Uh, much love to you. I will do a little music for closing. Uh, the power of, of, of the site having people and a community of people is amazing. I have another blog where I have 500 readers for it's uh, it's for about over 12 years uh, that's a Russian blog and the power of having friends who know me is is amazing they um, technical questions they answer political questions just finding some just finding the person was was easy I am looking for such and such a friend and la 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 I don't remember his last name but you know, here's his photograph, otherwise I don't remember exactly, but in few, you know, or right away, typically it's right away, but often in a few weeks somebody finds that person and, you know, or I know this person, but his telephone is not working. They connect me again. So that, that the, the power of, of the community is incredible. So, and many people, many of you also need jobs. Let's come together and be a job hub for uh, light workers. We need to come together and have our own uh, tolerant societies. So Lisa, Jim, and I would create a company. Lisa has a freelance job; she doesn't need that. But but if we had a, if we had a good if we had help starting, we'll we'll uh, I know we will know we know what to do next, because when we get first first money in. The thing starts breathing; it becomes alive. Right now, it's it's barely alive, but when when it's breathing, it's 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 uh, it's easier to raise money for after that. Basically, for my company, I need about three million until we get the money in from selling stuff, so from selling the the technology. So help us to start, and we will uh, do our best. All all our intentions are good, and what I'm asking is proper, ethical, and rational. I even have a Approve from uh, approval from up there. What I'm doing is is appropriate. And when you do your private channel session, don't be afraid to ask these questions. It's appropriate to do that. We are down here on Earth with a mission, and we need help in our mission. That's even Jesus said, "Don't be afraid to ask for help." And Bashar was saying, "Yeah, you don't have to force people to help you, but asking, you are entitled for a question. You can ask. It's appropriate." To come and ask, uh, you have to have faith in yourself and love yourself enough to understand you deserve to ask. Mm 